operator of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant says its risk management policy failed after workers detected contaminated water near the reactors. The admission comes days after the utility recognized that groundwater contained high levels of radioactive particles had seeped into the ocean. It took more than one month for the company to admit the leak. It took more than one month for the company to admit the leak. TEPCO officials told a panel of outside experts that they had opted to wait until a final confirmation of their data before recognizing the problem. They say they didn't want to disclose what they called an unconfirmed risk because they feared the information would deal a blow to the local fishing industry. The startling news comes just a day after the Japanese people went to the polls and handed Prime Minister Shinzo Abe's pro-nuclear party a large victory in Japan's upper house. The first signs of groundwater contamination were recorded in May inside monitoring wells and the plant's port facility. TEPCO officials promise they will proceed with the release of any information, even if it might raise public concerns. We deeply apologize for the shortcomings of management regarding our delayed admission over the leakage of contaminated water. We still need to work hard to develop our ability to communicate with the public. The head of the expert panel, a former chairman of the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission, has expressed disappointment. This lack of an effective communication program diminishes the hard work that a lot of people have been doing uh, for TEPCO. The president of TEPCO and the vice president in charge of nuclear power have agreed to a 10% reduction of their salary for a period of one month. Sometimes just think funny things. Anger is growing at the operators of Fukushima as an increasing number of reports indicate that Japan's crippled nuclear plant doesn't have radiation risks under control. Steam has been seen rising from a damaged reactor, and TEPCO, which runs Fukushima, has also admitted that contaminated water could be leaking into the sea. These actions indicate that you do not know what you're doing and that you do not have a plan, and that you're not doing all you can to protect the environment and the people. I apologize for not being able to live up to your expectations, the president of TEPCO told the independent advisory body that oversees the plant. Fukushima was severely damaged by the 2011 earthquake and tsunami, creating the worst nuclear disaster since Chernobyl in 1986. As criticism of TEPCO mounts up, the head of Japan's National Federation of Fisheries has handed the firm a letter of protest over harm being done to sea life. Until this week, TEPCO had persistently denied that radioactive water was reaching the sea, despite repeated warnings from nuclear experts and marine biologists. The Tokyo Electric Power Company just admitted that ever since the 2011 earthquake, radioactive water from Fukushima's nuclear site has been steadily leaking into the ocean. As terrifying as that is, many people in the U.S. will just shrug it off because Japan is far enough away to sound like another world. But the truth is, we should take heed because it does affect us and because we could be facing our own Fukushima-level nuclear disaster here in our own world in the not-too-distant future. Recently, about 80 gallons of radioactive water from the Palisades nuclear power plant were accidentally released into Lake Michigan. Officials weren't worried, though, because apparently the area's two nuclear power plants routinely discharge radioactive material into the air and into the lake. According to a Nuclear Regulatory Commission official, quote, they would like to recycle as much as possible of their radioactive water, but there's business needs. That's just part of the operating cycle. He also maintains that the regular dumping of radioactive water is quickly diluted in the lake. A rep from the anti-nuclear group Beyond Nuclear argues that dilution as a solution to radioactive pollution only guarantees a chronic exposure to tritium, a known cause of cancer, birth defects, and genetic damage to all those who rely on the lake for drinking water. And just this week, an ex-supervisor at the Indian Point nuclear power plant in New York was charged with fabricating fuel tests. 
He submitted bogus results, lying to NRC investigators about dangerous fuel contaminant levels to prevent the facility from being shut down. In Washington, the NRC has just begun an investigation into a problem with the cooling system at the Columbia Generating Station, which hasn't been properly maintained. At the Watts Bar nuclear plant in Tennessee, regulatory audits imperative to safety were just not done for four years because of bureaucratic paper shuffling. Keeping our aging nuclear power plants safe is not only increasingly difficult, it's also increasingly costly, as plants often go over maintenance budgets by millions of dollars. Yes, nuclear energy is carbon free, and that aspect is great. But our aging plants face more and more ridiculously dangerous issues. And considering the fact that our government is mired in greed, bureaucracy, and, well, idiocy, isn't it time we seriously reconsider hanging up the nuclear option hat before we face our own massive Fukushima-level disaster in our own little American world, too? This month marks a year since the publication of a study that took a detailed and critical look at Japan's nuclear industry. The Kurokawa report has harsh words for politicians, regulators and managers of Tokyo Electric Power Company, and it laid out several recommendations. But one year on, some of the people that penned it are questioning whether anything has changed. The diet appointed a panel of independent experts to investigate the nuclear meltdowns at Fukushima Daiichi. It was an unprecedented measure in the aftermath of an industrial accident. The panel spent a total of 900 hours questioning more than 1,100 witnesses, ranging from the prime minister and senior TEPCO officials to the workers who dealt with the crisis. They discovered that some senior TEPCO officials knew before the accident that a large tsunami could have a severe impact on the plant. The report concluded the accident was a man-made disaster. It said TEPCO officials had missed several opportunities of averting a crisis because they put the utility's business interests ahead of safety. The report also revealed what it called a regulatory capture, in which regulators were in effect complying with the expectations of the power industry. Among its conclusions, the panel recommended creating a permanent parliamentary committee to oversee the nuclear industry. It also stressed that the investigation was far from over and that it should be continued. One year later, nothing has been done on either proposal. Some people regret Japan's failure to take into account the conclusions of the Kurokawa report, and they've started a project to put its recommendations to better use. NHK Roads, Yoichiro Tataiwa reports. <laughs> When I read the report, I felt strongly that it's trying to teach young people and build a new future for Japan. I learned from the report that the government regulators were in fact regulated by the operators, so it was natural that they couldn't prevent the accident. Satoshi Shibashi is the driving force behind the project. He was a member of the DAI panel, and he thinks their message has failed to find an audience. Since our report is funded by taxpayers, I think we should share the content and the message of the report with as many people as possible. I hope we can generate more discussion on what lessons to draw from the Fukushima accident. Ishibashi has enlisted some university students to help turn the Kurokawa report into a video. This is the video we are producing. He says they're using simple words and animation to make the topic engaging and easy to understand. The 
原発の促進よりも国民の安全や健康を第一にしなければいけないよね。でも法律もそのようにはできていなかった。Translators are working on an English version of the video to carry the message beyond Japan's borders. Kiyoshi Kurokawa, who served as the chair of the DAI panel, has high hopes for the project. He really making a commitment to young people to engage into this process because that youth carry the future of Japan and the world. Ishibashi says an honest, level-headed discussion of the nuclear issue is essential, though it won't be easy. We have to look at the issue realistically, rather than just taking a stance for or against nuclear power. We should form ideas based on the realities and generate a discussion, exchange views with each other. Ishibashi's meetings usually draw around 30 participants from all kinds of backgrounds. It's not just about helping people to understand the issue. It's also to get us to think about things ahead. There's no quick fix for the problems associated with nuclear power and radiation. Two and a half years after the accident, and one year after the Krokow report came out, TEPCO is still launching from crisis to crisis, and the future of the nuclear industry remains a big question mark. Ishibashi says the Japanese public needs to generate a discussion now more than ever. Its life is worth less than zero. Just another cold fact of life on this horrifying planet.